What's up guys, Mr. Bellatrix here. Just going to be doing some tank dungeon guides, um, as a lot of the guides out there are not from a tank perspective. So, starting off with Sastasha, um, the very first dungeon that you'll be doing at level 15. Um, I'm going in as a, a warrior tank. Now, a warrior comes from the uh, Marauder. So, uh, two-handed, big axe-weaving, uh, hit things, high HP pool, big MA kind of tank. You can obviously choose the, the Paladin, which comes from the Gladiator, but uh, for this particular video, I've gone for a warrior tank. So it brings us into the dungeon here, and uh, I would highly recommend, as this is the first dungeon you're going to be doing, that you use your signs to mark the targets, because you're probably going to have some new players in here, and uh, and especially if you're starting out, it's kind of hard to hold aggro on multiple targets. So I'll mark up that first bat, head in here, uh, launch a tomahawk at it, and then use overpower to grab the aggro on them, then just go straight into our combo. And they're not obeying the, the mark, they're just attacking whoever, so you just need to switch between them and make sure that you're holding a, a nice steady M on any of the targets you've got. So as you can see up in the top left corner the uh, the bars up there are the enmity bars that will show you who's currently got hate and uh, you as a tank want to always be the highest with all enemies on that bar. So after that we head along. Um, I wonder why the, the healer is in cleric stance. That is a little worrying. So then you come with these two bats around the corner. Again, stick up a sign, throw in a tomahawk, and overpower. Now, if you don't have a tomahawk unlocked yet, then just go straight in with your uh, your heavy swing skull sunder combo, and, and use that on both of the of the bats, and that will make sure that you've got a pretty steady hate supply. Um, pop any cooldowns as you need them, as you see we've got force out here and bloodbath, so if you notice your HP is getting a little bit low uh, for example if your healer has got cleric stance turned on and isn't healing you properly just pop a force out so after you've done this you want to go back and you want to go up here and read this bloody memo now the memo will tell you what colour the captain likes his cabbage and that's useful uh, later on in this dungeon, so you know what kind of what colour of coral to interact with. So along we go, and this brings us to a cave Oriella and two black bats. So again, we want to mark cave Oriella as number one, and then any one of the black bats as number two. So as the most time, just going to wait for them to get closer, and then hit them with the overpower. And tanking really is a straightforward job. Um, I know some people find it quite stressful uh, because, you know, there's a lot of responsibility you're entrusted to lead through the dungeon. But really, it's fairly straightforward. Um, just make sure you've got the most enmity on the, uh, the, the monsters and stop people from dying. And it looks like I'm about to die because I'm not getting any healing. That was close. Okay, so down they go. And uh, the healer still has on cleric stance. I really wish she would turn that off. Uh, so again, two cave warriors down here. Uh, Tomahawk one, overpower. Straight in the combo. Just using tab to switch between targets. And the healer's all 
much on this um, fluid aura, which is really annoying because it fires the mobs around the arena like little pinballs. You really don't want to be using fluid aura as a healer too much. Um, only really if you've got aggro and you want to knock something back towards the tank. So anyway, we run down here, there's our first treasure coffer. So just jump off the edge, grab the treasure coffer, no problem. And then these Shade Seekers will do almost no damage to you at all. Uh, so just throw out them, grab the hay, swing a couple of axes at it. And then you want to take out the, the giant clam. Now when the clam's open, it can take damage. When the clam's shut, it will be immune to any damage. So we're running in here, next up is a... Uh, Next up is a pack of three mobs uh, that the healer decided he was going to pull, uh, which is lovely. Um, we have a fossil shell, uh, sorry, a pack of two, uh, fossil shell and cave Oriella. Again, so we just deal with these as normal with our combos. So because this is the first dungeon, it's fairly straightforward, but I do quite like it. Um, it's got a, a nice uh, sort of underwater caves theme, and uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. It's not one of my favourites, but um, you know, it's, it's, it's a good start to ease you in. There's no mechanics that are especially difficult, um, so yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So again, a few more Shade Seekers, almost no damage there. Um, there's a giant clam up here that's already been taken out. Then next is a little pack of two fossil shells. So we grab them. Um, the signs seem to be being pretty much ignored. Um, never mind. So we just take care of these. And we're closing in shortly on the first boss encounter. As my health is getting dangerously low again because the healer is casting stone and not healing. There's a cure finally coming out. And I have noticed that um, with the release of the, the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4 version, you will find a lot of newer players in the low-level dungeons. And you know, with it being Final Fantasy, there could be, the, well, there very likely is, quite a lot of players that have never actually played an MMO before. So, you know, you do have to cut them a little bit of slack. They come down here. We've got a pack of three: the Fossil Shell, Sastasha, Oroboron and the, uh, the cave or other. So we'll get them all into range, overpower to grab him on all of them, um, and then just start working them over one by one, making sure, looking up at the bars and making sure we've got a healthy lead. We also, if you look down here, want to make sure that all the lights are red and uh, we die because we didn't get healed. Great. And that's what happens when your healer doesn't heal. There's there's not much more to say about that. Um, you can be the best tank in the world, which you know, I'm a long way from being the best tank in the world, but you could be the best tank in the world if you're not getting heals from your healer. Then, you know, there's no hope. But like I was saying, you do have to cut them a certain degree of slack, um, just because a lot of these people probably not played MMOs, and they're probably just used to the Final Fantasies from the, the PlayStation, PlayStation 2. So it's okay. It's fine. These things are going to happen, especially in starter dungeons. So try not to worry about it. Um, and just keep plugging away. So 
so we'll just wait for them to run back. Let's see where they are, they are up here. Oh there they go, they're moving again. I thought perhaps they had decided to abandon. But it's all good. Here they come. Okay. Let's see if they'll pop some buffs. We just remind them to use protect here. I mean, I've got mine, but... Okay, the healer's tooled. That's... That's not good. Uh, not good at all. Um, when your healer starts pulling things, this is generally not looking great. So you see here, the clam uh, is, is invulnerable when it is open. Now, I didn't really want to go that way, I actually wanted to go. My goodness, they're pulling everything. The healer is, is Leroying through this dungeon, oh my goodness. Uh, it's okay, we can we can say, oh, he's got more, there's more. There's more, please don't do that. Please, please stop. Um, okay. So, as I was saying, if you were to go back this way, and instead of your healer randomly pulling everything in the whole world, you come up here and there is a treasure coffer up here, and oh no, there are, oh my goodness, I'm going to start this boss battle as well. And the... In here, the... Uh, the different colours of coral relate to the colour that the captain liked his cabbage. So they've run in, pushed anything they liked, and it has spawned a bunch of enemies. And they are continuing to just push whatever they feel like, instead of... reading the memo. Them. And then once you've done that, push the inconspicuous switch, and that brings us to our first boss, which is Chopper, a, gi a giant corral type enemy. That uh, it's fairly simple. There's no real <sighs> there's no real mechanics involved with this. Um, you just want to again make sure you've got a steady hit. You will cast an AOE called Charged Whisker. So if you just use your uh, your stun move for that, which for us is Brutal Swing, and that will just interrupt the, uh, the area of effect. And that's all there is. It's a really gentle introduction to, to bosses. Now, I don't have... Um, Brutal Swing was not off cooldown that time, so we just had to get out of the way. And... I really wish it stopped doing that. I really really wish he would not fluid aura the boss around. He's got cleric stance back on, fluid aura. This is not good. Anyway, defeating the boss drops the first treasure chest and there's some plundered gear which is for tanks but it's no use to me. Um, I have that set already so we pass on that. So then here we run into a shallow claw reaver and two scurvy dogs. So again, grab enemy, uh, enmity on the enemies, uh, and wait for the white mage to, of course, ping them around like pinpon balls. That's great. Any chance of some healing over here? No. In terms of the order to take them out, I would try and take out the reaver first, then the two shallow dogs, for no other reason than, you know, I feel like it. Um, I've just given up on marking, ta marking targets. Um, they're just not paying attention to them. So, we'll 
just ignore that. What a group to choose for the first video. How on earth did I end up with this? Anyway, second boss brings us to two Shallow Tail Reavers and Captain... Oh my... Oh, oh we're, we're going. Okay. Two Shallow Tail Reavers and, uh, and Captain Madison. Um, so, again, grab hit on these. You won't be able to defeat Captain Madison once his health gets down to around 45-50%. He will... He will run away. Uh, so take out the Reavers first. Um... And then just DPS down the captain. Just tab between them, make sure you've got enmity on everybody. Once you've got enough enmity on one uh, target, you can pretty safely switch to another. Yep, yeah, there he goes. Fantastic. It's okay, you know. I don't mind running around. And there he goes, so he turns green, he's untargetable. Um, I'm guessing the way this is going, people are probably going to chase him. And that drops another treasure coffer. Um, so an ethereal hard leather grimoire, no use to me. As you can see, it's an arcanist's arm. And then we come down here. Now, this pool we have three up here, a Shallow Eye Reaver, um, and a Shallow Tail Reaver, a Shallow Scale Reaver. Take out the Shallow Eye Reaver first, uh, as it's a ranged archer, and if you don't, then it could possibly get your, uh, your healer killed from range. So try and take that out first. Again, just switch it between them, make sure you've got enmity on everybody. Uh, they've managed to knock this one behind me, which isn't great, but never mind. Still no heals forthcoming. Uh, in fact, not much, but not much apart from fluid auras forthcoming from this uh, this white mage. So, for a full clear, you've got side rooms off to the left and to the right. Um, by the looks of things, these guys are probably just going to randomly pull things, and I won't get a chance to explore properly. <laughs> um, but yeah, for a full clear, there's rooms to the left and right, um, and they contain normally two enemies and some items. I really wish I'd chosen a better dungeon for you guys. Well, not a better dungeon, there's nothing wrong with the dungeons and a nice dungeon, but being entry level, it is a little bit of a learning ground. So when we take out them, those two, the, the Reaver and his dog, and then there's you'll pick up the Captain's Quarters key. The Captain's Quarters is protected by two Shallow Tail Reavers here. So we're going to grab them, a couple of overpowers to secure early enmity. I don't know where this the healer is going, it's obviously not healing me. And then we'll just combo them to make sure... I don't even know where he's, where he's hit that one. All the way over there, okay, well... If nothing else, this has served as a good guide to show you what to expect when <laughs> you're in early dungeons. Captain's Quarters opens inside, there's another Shallow Tail Reaver. It's like a sort of mini boss. Um, he doesn't. He's stronger than a normal Reaver, but he doesn't have any special mechanics. There he goes. Over the other side of the room, of course. So again, single target, really easy, secure the enmity, use maim as well, because maim, 100, uh, 100 potency attack, um, 191 is comboed in with heavy swing, 
that increases your damage dealt by 20%. I think it's 10% there, the other level is 20% here. Use that uh, where you need to increase your damage, which increases your hit. So he drops a Wave Rider gate key. And oh my, if we go left out here, we find them, which have pulled already. You'll probably come across this quite a lot as a tank. DPS and occasionally healers will, for some reason, think that they're the tank and they will just decide, you know what, we're pulling now, um, regardless of if you're ready or not. So, open the gate with the Wave Rider gate key, down through Dead Man's Drink, and this will bring us down to our next boss, which is part two of Captain Madison and again to Shallow Tear Reavers. Now with him you with this boss you want to try and grab everything. Just make sure we've got enmity on all of them. Again kill the two reavers first. Uh, always the priority to get rid of these ads. And uh, again the captain can't die in this boss, but come on, just focus on the ads, please, please. Okay, so the ads are dead, Captain Madison is the target. Now we want to move him across to, it's on your left hand side, it's the east side of the arena, and you'll see up here there's a gate, so hold him. It's one of the few times you'll probably want to have it facing your team. But for a, a warrior attack it's quite handy because out of the gate are going to come some scurvy dogs. Here they come right on cue. Uh, so you want to make sure you grab enmity on these as quickly as possible. Because they'll probably just go straight for your healer. And, uh, and that's not good. Nobody likes soft squishy healers to be eaten. Um, pop a cooldown because you know you're going to be taking damage from five enemies at the same time and if like me you've got a healer that is uh, somewhat anti-healing then you're probably going to need a cooldown and then again once they're all down just focus on him turn screen again and he can't be attacked so that drops another treasure coffer awarded round shield uh, perfect for early level gladiators but not so much used to me uh, in here we are um, just apparently pulling all and sundry uh, three enemies in the first pool shallow tail reaver scurvy dog and shallow eye reaver again personally i would take out the archer first ranged is probably a bigger threat than anything else at this precise moment in time, so take that out. Then the Shallow Tail Reaver, and then finally the Scurvy Dog would be the, uh, the preferred order. If you do lose enemy on them, then just throw out a Tomahawk, and that'll get it back 9 times out of 10. So in this big room, there's enemies on the east side and on the west side. We want to take the west side enemies, which is a group of three. Overpower on them, and this one has just managed to slip my grasp. There we go, bring them all back to the group for easy DPS and AOE DPS from our Thalmatarch. Again, ranged first, then the two different kinds of melee. All that would appear that this group is just picking and choosing what it feels to attack and destroy everything. So you can either pull these enemies on the, the west side or you can avoid them and just stick close here and then grab the three enemies protecting the door to the boss room. And this is the final boss encounter of Sustasha. Um, which does have um, its own little mechanic. So 
it'll be interesting to see how this group deals with that. It can be ignored now. Um, with a lot of players using the duty roulette, you'll probably have higher geared players coming in here, and, uh, and they can dish out more damage and take more damage than the, the level you're supposed to be, which is 18 and under. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to go into the boss room, and uh, the boss is going to be in the middle of the room. There's four sort of drains in the, uh, the corners of the room in a square pattern. Now, randomly throughout the fight, it will say that uh, there's water bubbling to the surface. And you'll see water spouts coming from out of these grates here. Uh, the unnatural ripples. Now, what you want to do is position each of your people within visible distance of these ripples and uh, and then when they start bubbling if you interact with them at right click they will um, it will basically get rid of the unnatural ripples and stop an ad from spawning if you don't interact with them you will get um, an ad I'm sure will get at least one during the course of this which you need to pick up as a tank and uh, and make sure it doesn't eat your healers or your soft, squishy DPS. So again, just uh, DPS. There's bubbles forming on the water surface. There they are, up there. And uh, he is run up and attempting to interact. And did he get there in time? It appears that he did. There's some more. And they occasionally change. So there's some more at the back. Nobody appears to be interacting with that. Or that one. They've thrown out a limit break. I need extra healing. It's very important because I'm just about to pick up these adds. So these Baleen guards. Throw a tomahawk at them. This one's actually put to sleep. That's handy. Uh, so make sure you pick up the guard. Uh, it doesn't help when he's getting pinned around. There's some more. And this is what happens when people don't interact with it. This turns into a giant cluster fudge. So we'll just try and overpower it, pick them up, and hope that people can focus on the boss quickly to DPS him down. The limit rig's already been used. But then the Orca Tooth is wobbling. He's on jelly legs, and he is away. And that is Sestasha, and it's also the quality of the groups that you're likely to get in this particular dungeon. So duty complete, go ahead and pick up your loot from the end of the dungeon. Don't forget to commend the players that you thought had done well. Um, I'm going to commend Funky Fingers uh, because he's the only one who actually played his role properly. Um, Tartarax was pulling everything uh, Lithian, I have no idea what game he was playing, but it certainly didn't appear to be an MMO. A Four Striker skirt, again part of the Four Striker set for a DPS. No use to me. And then exit, and that takes us out. So this will be Mr. Bellatrix guiding you through a somewhat difficult Sustasha run. I hope it's been some use. See you guys again. <laughs>